Hey everybody, it's Molly with All Ears. I am here today with a brand new video. Now, two very popular character dining locations have reopened their doors, but things look a little bit different. I am headed to Cinderella's Royal Table here at Magic Kingdom, as well as Hollywood and Vine over at Disney's Hollywood Studios to show you what those modified character meals look like and help you decide, is it still worth it? Is it something you wanna do on your Disney vacation? I hope you're ready, I hope you're excited. We're headed in the castle, y'all. Cinderella's Royal Table prior to the closure was the creme de la creme hardest dining reservation to get because one, it's princess character dining. Cinderella's there along with some of her friends. It could have been Ariel, Belle, Jasmine, Sleeping Beauty, a whole variety of the different princesses joined you. And number two, most importantly, it's inside Cinderella Castle. It's the only way that normal guests are gonna get inside Cinderella Castle. So that made it a very popular, nay, the most popular dining reservation in all of Walt Disney World prior to the closure. Now that it's reopened, they are not advertising it as a character dining experience. They did knock the price down a little bit, but it's still really expensive. You're still getting to eat in the castle, but there's no princesses. So we're gonna go check it out. We're gonna go eat in there, but we're gonna see if we still think it's worth it. As it stands right now, Cinderella's Royal Table is only gonna be open for lunch and dinner at the time I'm recording this, and it is a little bit less expensive. It used to be $75 per adult, now $62, $62 for adults, so a little bit less expensive because again, there's not advertised characters, but you are still getting in the castle, so you get to save a little bit of money. I do still highly recommend reservations though because it is still a very coveted reservation to be able to sit inside Cinderella Castle, but you may get a little bit luckier. It may not be quite as in demand as of course, so you may be able to snag a reservation, uh, not that immediate 60 days out, or you may even be able to do walk-up depending on the day. It could get crazy, but times of wasting TikTok I'm not trying to be like Cinderella and running late and losing my personal belongings. So let's get to our reservation. Check-in for Cinderella's Royal Table is right here on the back side of the castle across from where Bifty Bobbity Boutique's entrance is. Um, if you are using a smartphone, you're gonna wanna take advantage of that online check-in in the My Disney Experience app um, where you check in, let them know how many people are here, if you're celebrating anything, allergies, um, and then they'll text you when your table's ready. It's my turn to go in. I haven't been inside the castle in so long and oh my gosh, guys, I didn't think I was gonna be um, a crybaby today, but I guess you never know because I have tears in my eyeballs right now. Cinderella used to stand right here and do your meet and greet before your meal, but obviously she's not doing that right now. The sign here says, castle royalty may stop by. I have my cameras ready and remain seated. Oh, okay. Here I go up the royal stairs. <gasps> oh my gosh. I'm freaking out. Just take a moment when you're in here and look at all the ornate detail. It's gorgeous in here. Thank you. Okay, let's talk about the menu real quick. It is a three course pre-fix meal. It's again, $62 for adults, 37 for kids. Um, you get your choice of an appetizer. They've got like a charcuterie plate. They've got a soup, they've got a salad, the choice of an entree. They've got a steak, a chicken, a fish, as well as a plant-based option. And then your choice of a dessert. Um, they've got a seasonal cheesecake. They've got like a, a tart um, that is plant-based. And then they've also got a, like a chocolate dessert. Uh, so you get to choose one of each thing. Um, for the kids, they've got some kid-friendly uh, appetizers like cheese and grapes um, and then they've got some kid entrees and then they get to pick sides like vegetables or fruit or different things like that and then the kids have their dessert as well um, included with your meal is a drink uh, like a soda or an iced tea or water or coffee or something like that a non-specialty beverage is included with that price um, and then if you want to add a cocktail you can do so at an additional charge somebody's coming i wonder who it is
Cinderella just came out. That was lovely. Again, they did not advertise this as a character meal, but when I was walking in, there was a sign that said there may be some royal visitors, but you have to remain seated. Um, so we'll see if anybody else comes out. I have a feeling it's just going to be Cinderella, though. Um, but she does come out. She waves. She poses for pictures. Um, I would say it's very luck of the draw how close you're going to get to her, because um, I'm right here. And she was all the way over there. So if you were on one of those tables, you would have been like really close to her. But I was pretty far from her, so if I was a child, I might be upset. Um, but I have a really good view out the windows back there. That's Fantasyland. So um, it's absolutely gorgeous in here. And it's nice that Cinderella came and twirled and waved when I didn't expect to see any princesses. So definitely a little surprise there, and that was nice. My first items have arrived. I decided to treat myself to a mimosa because, I mean, I'm in the castle. I feel like I need to toast to that. Um, so it's just a classic mimosa, but they said that is their most popular of the cocktails. Um, and then I also have started with the charcuterie. So we've got uh, some serrano ham, some chorizo, and then this little baby right here is a pork and duck fat. Um, it kind of looks like a, like, a, like a chicken salad or a pate, but it's neither of those things. It's again, pork and duck fat. Um, and then you've got some delicious looking pickle chips and some stone ground mustard and some crostini. So that's what I'm starting with. Okay, first up, let's try this mimosa. Ooh, that is good. Just a classic mimosa, but it's got a good orange juice to champagne ratio, which I'm very particular about, but I could tell by the nice light coloring that that would be a good one. You can tell it's fresh. You can tell it's good bubbles in there. So cheers. We're in the castle. All right, I'm going to try my charcut now. Uh, this one, I put a little mustard, a little pickle, and a little chorizo on there. Pickle is adding a nice crunch to the saltiness of the, the chorizo. Mm. That's really good mustard too. Very vinegary. I'm going to try the pork mixture now. Ooh, that is lovely. Nice and creamy and flavorful. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Overall, a fine charcuterie. I do consider myself to be somewhat of a connoisseur because I love a charcuterie. And I know the charcuterie is the meat, but I do like it when there's cheese. Um, but uh, it's not bad. It's, it's pretty good. The meat, were, meat was all good. I would like a few more crostini, so I'm gonna ask for that. But, but not a bad choice, especially if you're gonna get something heavy in a little bit, you can do a little bit lighter. Um, and again, they also have a salad that looks really good, as well as a soup. Um, so, a, a fun first course. And I really do like this pork mixture. That is nice. I'm gonna keep eating that one. For my entree, I got the uh, steak, and we've got a medium rare steak. That's how I asked for it. And then it's a celery root mash a Bordelais sauce, and then seasonal vegetables, which clearly today is asparagus. So that looks really yummy as my main course. Cut into my steak. Mmm. Mmm. That is cooked very, very well. I love the Bordelais sauce. And I also am enjoying this. Celery mash. It does taste like it's by potato in with there. As far as the steak goes, I would say it was better than the one I had at Be Our Guest, which was a comparable price. Um, but it's not going to be as good as one that you get, like when I ate at La Cellier recently, or if you got some Steakhouse or Chico or one of the signature restaurants that specializes in steak. Um, I don't think it's going to be as good as that, but 
It is cooked really nicely. A little char on the outside. Love the Bordelais. And like I said, I, I think it was comparable, if not a little bit better than the one at Be Our Guest. Mm. I also love asparagus. So I'm happy that was a seasonal vegetable. Cooked nicely. Overall, the food here is better than I remember. Because um, one thing about this restaurant is that it's always known that it's expensive, but you're paying for the ambiance and the characters. Um, but I do think they've stepped their food game up uh, since I've, I've been, so that's nice. Here's my dessert. Oh, hold on. Someone's here, more important than me, and my cheesecake. Back to my dessert. For dessert, I have ordered the seasonal cheesecake. It's a deconstructed cheesecake and it's pumpkin, which is fitting because one, it's fall, and two, it's Cinderella, duh, pumpkin carriage, you get it. Um, um, so it's got this cheesecake filling, this ch pumpkin cheesecake filling down the middle, and then some pumpkin seeds and a little caramel glaze, and then it's got some gingerbread squares and crumbles on it, which would be like your crust for your cheesecake. And it looks really fun, and obviously I love everything pumpkin, so I'm excited to try it. And since Cinderella isn't signing autographs or coming to the table, I got this nice card from my server. It's got Cinderella, and then it's got Jacques and Gus Gus and Susie and Perla, and it's like mosaic style, kind of like uh, the Castle Breezeway down below. And then you've got Cinderella's autograph right there on the back. So similar to what we've seen at Topolino's and Garden Grill, but you get a little take home, which is nice. Okay, let's try this pumpkin cheesecake. I love a little spoon, it also makes me feel so dainty when I am with that. Um, all right, I'm gonna try the little filling first. Mm, oh my gosh. That is so yummy. Oh my goodness. That is so pumpkin y and autumnal. And it's had these little graham, not graham, gingerbread crumbles on it. Houser's, that is good. My pumpkin friends. This is one of the best pumpkin things I've had. I'm gonna get the caramel sauce in there this time. This is excellent. I love the gingerbread squares. It's nice and molasses-y. Caramel. Mm. That is an A-plus dessert. Is this a little meringue? Yes. This has been my favorite part, is this pumpkin cheesecake. That is excellent. Wow, that is awesome. Just finished up my lunch at Cinderella's Royal Table and wow, it really is magical to go into the castle. It brought tears to my eyes walking in there. It truly is like no other setting to be able to look out over Fantasyland um, while you're enjoying your meal. So ambiance wise, I don't think you can beat Cinderella's Royal Table. Um, it does depend where you're seated, how close you're gonna get to Cinderella. As you can see, I was pretty far away from her. Um, so I, as an adult, can contain myself barely from getting up, but I do think it'd be hard if you had little ones that wanted to see her and you were seated where I was, how far away you are, because you are asked to stay seated the whole time. Um, especially if they saw other kids who were worse seated really close to her, being able to interact with her a little bit more. So that's one thing. It's great that they have Cinderella, but it's, it's not like um, Garden Girl or Topolinos where the characters have actually like gotten close enough to me where I could take a good selfie um, and actually have a little interaction with them just because of where I was sitting. So um, that's definitely going to vary person by person. It is a little bit less expensive, but it still is an expensive meal. Um, the prefix three course meal was $62 for me before any kind of discount. Um, they do take Tibbles in Wonderland, they take annual pass, DDC, um, but still $62. My steak was very good. Um, the charcuterie was good and the pumpkin dessert really was fantastic. But if I'm gonna shell out that kind of money for a steak, um, I you're gonna get a better quality steak at like Gigo or El Cellier or Yachtsman or something like that. So while I think the food is much improved since I've last been at Cinderella's Royal Table, food alone, I don't think it's worth the price food plus the aviance, it's pretty nice. Uh, Pete, please keep in mind as well though, it was a long meal, like it was an hour and a half. So if you only have one day in the Magic Kingdom and you're trying to get all the attractions done, keep that in mind that it's gonna be a little bit of a time suck. Um, so I can't tell you if it's worth it to your family or not to dine at Cinderella's Royal Table. I can just show you what my experience was like. Um, so again, in my experience, my service was fantastic. My meal was very good um, and it's gorgeous to be in there. I just wasn't very close to Cinderella. So if you don't actually care about the characters and you just want to go into the castle, I think you'll enjoy it. If you are expecting a character meal, even a more modified one, like the ones we've seen at Garden Grill or Topolino so far, uh, that's not really what you're going to get. And you're going to get a lot closer to the princesses 
in the Princess Cavalcade here or at Epcot. Another thing to consider is because it's Cinderella's Royal Table, because it's inside the castle, there's a lot of families with young kids there. Um, so if you're a, a young couple that doesn't have kids and you want to go on a romantic date, you may want to go somewhere else that's a little bit quieter because it is noisy in there. There are kids enjoying themselves, which this is the Magic Kingdom. Of course there are, but if you're looking for like a romantic, intimate date, uh, you're probably not going to get that at Cinderella's Royal Table. So that was my experience. Let me know if you're headed here now that the modified um, experience has opened up. Um, yeah, but that was the castle. It's the next day. Well, to you, it's just been a few minutes thanks to the magic of editing. But I'm at Disney's Hollywood Studios for the first day of Hollywood and Vine's reopening. Hollywood and Vine is a seasonal character dining experience for lunch and dinner. It is Halloween themed right now, so I am dressed to impress. Very excited. Uh, it used to be a buffet, not going to be a buffet anymore. And of course, it's going to be a modified character experience. So I'm ready and I'm excited to go check it out. Hey, hello. Hollywood and Vine, Brian. So when you first come in, there's this cute Minnie's Halloween Dine sign. Uh, before, a character would have been here for pictures, but of course they're not. But they do have these cute character pumpkins. And if you'd like to take a picture here, um, the cast members can't take your phone, but if you want to take a selfie or have someone in your party take your picture, you totally can. Just be mindful of other people. Guess who's coming? sat down Goofy and Pluto came out and it was super cute. They actually get really close because of where I'm sitting. They were like right there. So that's the closest maybe besides Garden Grill but I think actually the closest I've gotten to a character at a character dining experience. Um, they have great music going on in here. It's all Halloween so they had a little Somebody's Watching Me by Michael Jackson earlier. They've got the Oogie Boogie song going on now so I'm very into the vibe. Um, they've very much cleared it out here. This used to be a very, very busy restaurant. And like I said, it was a buffet. Um, so it was a lot of getting up and going. And now it's a pre-fixed three course meal. So it's $55 for adults. Um, and you're gonna select a salad and bread. That's unlimited. You can get as much as you want if you'd like more, but they've got two different salads to choose from. Um, and then you'll choose one of the entrees and one of the desserts, and they're gonna bring it to you, which I think makes life so much easier at a character meal when you don't have to be getting up and down, going to the buffet. And then you're like, oh my gosh, Mickey's near my table. I got a red bag that is gone. Um, included with your purchase of the meal is uh, non-specialty beverages, so sodas, iced tea, coffee, um, juice, that sort of thing. Um, and then, of course, you can always upgrade to a cocktail, beer, wine, um, or a specialty beverage. Ah! Baby, you are so cute! This outfit is so precious! <laughs> You are so cute! <laughs> Round one is here. These are just some delicious looking dinner rolls. And then I got the harvest salad, which has got lettuce, croutons, red onion, tomatoes, and ranch. And that's all you care to enjoy, like Olive Garden. <laughs> yeah! For my entree, my server and a couple other cast members said that the pork asibuco was the best thing on the menu. All new menu, again, it used to be a buffet, so I had to go with their recommendation. So it's a big chunk of pork and it's on a creamy bed of borson grits. And then there's some caramelized apples to go with it. And it smells so good. Starting with the salad. Mm, that was good ranch. I do consider myself somewhat a ranch connoisseur. And that is really good, fresh, crisp. Really good cornbread croutons. Mm. Mm. And I love red onions, so this is a really good starter salad. Mwah. <laughs> Time to try the pork. It is like fall off the bone, so tender. That was not what I had my eye on when I first looked at the menu, but I'm so glad that my sweet server told me to get this because that is excellent. Oh my gosh, that's so tender. And the grits are phenomenal. They're Borson cheese grits. I'm impressed. 
their food before was fine, but it was nothing that exciting. Nothing I'd write home about. But, whew, love that little apple. This is excellent. You are so cute, Minnie. I love your dress. <laughs> You're just the cutest little vampire I've ever seen. <laughs> cute are you? The cutest. <laughs> I like your Halloween dog tag. <laughs> Tis the season when leaves fall. Tis the season when leaves fall. We gather together for fun for all. We gather together for fun for all. May your tricks be sweet and your treats be sour. Tricks be sweet and your tricks be sour. Happy Halloween every hour. Happy Halloween every hour. Say the magic words with me. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Again for good measure. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. So, oh, here. So every now and again they do this thing where they have the Halloween chant. They do remind you to stay seated, but the characters kind of march up and down and they have you repeat after them and do a little Halloween like spell. Um, and the characters have come by a bunch of times. Like he's good. So every now and again they do this thing where they all come out and they play this jazzy Halloween song. And all the characters dance. Okay, sorry, I got interrupted by dancing. Sorry, I got interrupted with dancing. So every so often they do this thing where they do the Halloween spell where all the characters come out and then they make uh then they play this very jazzy halloween song and then all the characters come by and they dance uh and it's really really cute and the characters have come by a bunch of times i've seen all of them at least twice i've seen goofy and pluto three or four times at this point um and i haven't even had dessert yet so i bet i get to see mickey and minnie right here again so um so far i'm pretty much loving this also they just played thriller and now they're playing superstitious by uh stevie wonder so i may just move in all the desserts on the menu right now, my server told me, are like deconstructed pies. Uh, there's an apple blueberry, there's a cherry lemon, there's a banana cream, and I couldn't resist this one, which is the s'mores. Um, so it's like chocolate pie crust, marshmallow fluff. There is a graham cracker streusel, and then inside there, you can't really see it. Let's get it in there. Chocolate mousse. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited about this. Pie time. Hi, time. Mm. It's so good, but it is super rich. My favorite part, I think, is this graham crackers like crumble. Because it's cut the super rich chocolate mousse. It adds that fun crunch. Mm. But I've been told by all the cast members I've talked to here that they're all great. Each cast member I've talked to has had a different favorite. So what I would do if you're here with more people is everybody get a different one and then everybody share so you could try all of them because if you don't want something so rich, you may want to do like the apple blueberry or there's a lemon cherry, there's a banana cream. So you could all get one uh, different ones and then, and then you get to try them all. Now before at Hollywood and Vine, like most character buffets, they just had a buffet of like all those mini desserts. Um, and none of them were great in my opinion. My favorite was always the soft serve ice cream machine. So this is better than any of those little mini desserts in my opinion. So I definitely think they've stepped their game up with both the presentation and with uniqueness and deliciousness. And since the characters aren't signing autographs right now, my server just brought me this super cute card with the characters on it. And then when you look on the back side, they've all signed it. So that's a sweet little take home that they're doing at the, uh, the character meals right now. I just finished at Minnie's Seasonal Dine at Hollywood and Vine, and I gotta say, I loved it. Uh, that's definitely the best character meal I've been to since the parks have reopened. It felt the most normal, I guess you could say, compared to what character meals were like. Uh, Mickey and Minnie were pretty quick when they came by me. They were pretty, like, moving nonstop, um, but they still 
like I was able to take some cute selfies and some videos of them and stuff. Um, but Goofy and Pluto, because they were near my section a lot more, they stopped. Like Goofy stopped it. He posed for me. It felt like a normal character meal, minus the fact, of course, I couldn't get up and like hug him or sign an autograph book. But I thought it was really cute. Every so often, again, they do like a little song thing and all the characters come out and dance. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really fun. I definitely think of the character modified experiences they have right now, that that's the best one. Plus they're in Halloween costumes, which like, obviously that's adorable. Um, it's still expensive. It's still, you know, $55 an adult, but that's as close as you're gonna get to characters right now. That's the most character interaction I've had in a long time. Um, so if you're a character dining person or a character person and you wanna see some, you know, classic friends, Mickey, Minnie, Goofy and Pluto, and especially if you wanna see them in their cute Halloween costumes, I really enjoyed myself, so it may not be for everybody, but also the food was very good. So the food itself, not worth the price, but everything together, I really enjoyed it. I, I'm very, very pleasantly surprised by Hollywood and Vine right now. So there you go. So all I can do again is share my experience and then you can decide if it's something you guys want to do. Well, friends, that's a wrap on this video. Two of Disney's most popular character dining locations have reopened and I was happy to share with you what the modified experiences are like. Hopefully it will help you decide if it's something that you want to do during your next trip to Walt Disney World. Definitely let me know in the comments. Let me know what questions you have in the comments. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe to our channel, follow us on Instagram at AllEarsNet. Until next time, y'all, I'm Molly, and it's been magical. Want to see more of my videos? Click over here. Want to subscribe? You can do that right here. And also, ring that notification bell to make sure you get instantly notified anytime we post a new video. Thanks for following. See you real soon.